Hey everybody, it's Professor McDonald. In this video, we're going to do an overview of how to use synthetic division, all the different, um, well not all of the different uses, but a few of the wonderful uses for synthetic division, especially as it relates to graphing polynomial functions, and particularly polynomial functions that we haven't already learned other techniques for graphing. So just to give you some insight, what I mean is you know how to graph a linear polynomial, uh, y equals mx plus b. You know how to graph quadratic polynomials to find the two x-intercepts um, up to two x-intercepts and the vertex, for instance. You also know how to take parent functions or toolkit functions and perform transformations such as shifting and reflecting and stretching. Now we're going to look at polynomial functions that involve a little more investigating to be able to sketch the graph. So synthetic division is a hugely useful tool um, towards that end. Now um, some of the concepts I'm going to cover here, um, you may be familiar with them already, but I'm trying to connect the dots a little bit for us here and um, also arrive at an example of how to use synthetic division along with the concepts we've discussed um, in points one through four um, to make sense out of why we can factor a polynomial all the way down to linear factors if we just know one factor or uh, one x-intercept. And so let's get into it. Let's look at these assumptions one by one. Um, a couple of things that I want you to um, be familiar with as you're doing this lesson, or I assume that you're familiar with already, is that you know how to multiply binomials, right? So if you need to pause the video and just make sure you are up to speed on how to multiply a couple of binomials and get this result, um, please do so. Also, make sure you know how to factor going the other direction, pulling apart a quadratic polynomial into the product of two linear binomials. And also, do you know how to perform synthetic division. Now, you may be watching this before you've actually learned how to do synthetic division, or maybe you haven't done it in a while, but you've seen it before, or maybe you've already learned it. So either way, we're just going to assume that you already know how to do it, and that's okay if you don't. You can just follow along to the best of your ability. The point of this video is not really to teach synthetic division. That will be taught um, more explicitly and step-by-step step in other videos within your guided learning assignment. But what I need you to get from this video is what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how it all connects. All right, so here is an example of synthetic division. If you want to pause the video and see if you know how to do that, that might help you understand more what I'm discussing here. We will do some synthetic division at the very end of this video. It won't be a full lesson though, it'll just be a run through. Okay, so first thing that I mentioned as a use for synthetic division is what most people know it for, is a shortcut for long division. It only works when you have the divisor of a certain form. So you need to be able to identify when synthetic division can be used and when it cannot. And I should just say as a side note, there are ways that you can force the ability to use synthetic division. It's a little more advanced and it usually ends up involving fractions and many students are not comfortable with that. So I'm just going to keep it simple here and say, if it's not already in the correct form, if the divisor is not already in the correct form, I'm going to recommend long division instead of synthetic division for the problem. All right, so first of all, it says that the divisor must be in the form x minus k. So what is that? That is a linear binomial in the form y equals mx plus b, where your m, your slope, is 1, or the lead coefficient, the coefficient of x in the bottom here, as you can see, is 1. Also, for it to be linear, the power on x, or the degree of the divisor, has to be 1. So both of those conditions are satisfied here. So we could use synthetic division to perform this division here. Here's another example, which does not fit the requirement because the lead coefficient on x is not 1, it's 3. And still another example where the lead coefficient 
is 1, and that's good, but the power on x, the degree of the divisor, is not linear. It's not a power of 1. Um, you could actually, this one just so happens, you can factor this into, oops, I have the wrong color there. Let me pause and fix that. As I was saying, you could factor that divisor, and this is just a coincidence, um, right? You could factor this like this. It's a difference of squares. And then you could perform synthetic division with either one of these. Um, but let's just kind of assume, or maybe I can change this even, so it's not, you're not thinking about that so much. What if it was x squared plus 4? Well, then this would not fit the requirement to do synthetic division, and you would be better off doing long division. Uh, what is a zero of a function is the next thing I want to talk about, even though it's not one of my uses that I listed. Um, just coming back to my, we talked about how it's a shortcut for long division. Now we're talking about how we can use it to determine if x equals k is a zero of the polynomial. Well, in order to understand what that means at all, we should make sure we understand what a zero is of a polynomial, okay? A zero of a polynomial is an x-intercept quite simply when you're looking at the graph. Um, but it's called a zero of the function because the function, which you probably know, f of x is another way of saying y, right? And so when the function y, when the y value is zero, what is x? If you know um, x is some number where y equals 0, then that gives you a placement on the x-axis, right, such as the values you see here. And it's interesting if you see how the factored form of this polynomial looks, x minus 2 times the quantity x plus 3, well, you might recognize that if you set each of these factors equal to 0 from the first set, you would get x equals 2, which would give you an x-intercept of 2 comma 0. And from the second binomial, you would get, if you set that equal to 0, you would get x equals negative 3 when y equals 0. So um, that's how uh, 0 of a function makes sense to call it that. <laughs> it's just another way of saying an x-intercept or a place where also you can notice that if I took my original function, f of x, and plugged in either one of my zeros, let's plug in 2, Okay, so we're going to test this one out. f of 2 equals 2 squared plus 2 minus 6. So all I did was I plugged in the 2 here into wherever the x was in the original function. And then I'm just testing to make sure that it does, in fact, um, zero out. So 2 squared is 4. Bring down the rest. 4 plus 2 is positive 6. And so 6 minus 6 equals 0. So it works, right? When you plug in that x value, you get a corresponding y value of 0. So it all should come together and make sense in your mind that way. Now, um, what if you had to find the zeros of a polynomial, such as um, x squared plus 5x plus 6? All right, so let's say your function was this polynomial. How would you find the zeros? Well, you would set the whole thing equal to zero and then solve for x. And something like this is factorable. If it wasn't, you could still find the zeros by using the quadratic formula. But um, this does factor nicely like this. And so then if we set each one of these equal to zero, Right, we're going to find the two places where the function graph would go through the x-axis. So then we have x-intercepts at negative 2 comma 0 and x equals, whoops, I meant to write the x value negative 3 comma zero. Okay, so you see how these ideas connect here? All right, so now let's test the theory. Is um, If you say that x equals k is a zero of f of x, then we're just giving um, the zero, the value of x, a generic name so that you might have, um, you could also write your x-intercept as 
something like this. Is it an x-intercept? It will be if k is a zero of the function. Okay, not that it's equal to zero, but that it is a zero of the function f of x, right? All right, so an easy way to be able to tell, and I'll get this, let's use the example x squared, well, I should call it f of x first of all, f of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 4. Okay, is it a zero? Is If I let k be 1 and plug in, whoops, I forgot to replace this x here with the k value of 1, the x value of 1, um, this is going to zero out. Okay, so it is a zero of the function. But what if I said use synthetic division to tell? Okay, because you'll have problems like that in your lessons where instead of evaluation to tell, okay, what we did is we evaluated f of 1 to see if it was equal to 0. That's what we just did. Whoops, can't, can't draw very well. There we go. Um, but if we had to use synthetic division, we would have taken that value of k, And someone just started a lawnmower outside my window, so I apologize for the noise, but I've come this far. I'm going to just keep pushing right through. Hopefully it's not too distracting. <laughs> so um, we have the value, the coefficients 1, negative 5, and 4 to do synthetic division. Again, I'm not teaching synthetic division here. I'm just demonstrating it. You'll learn it in more detail in a different lesson, a uh, different recorded video, or hopefully you've actually already learned it. All right, so I'm dropping down the first coefficient, then I do 1 times 1 is 1, add those together to get negative 4, then 1 times negative 4 is negative 4, and then add those together to get a remainder of 0, okay? So if there's a remainder of 0, what does that mean? Well, if you remember just dividing regular numbers, if you didn't have a remainder, that meant that it divided evenly or that it was a factor. For instance, if I divide um, 6 divided by 2, for instance, equals 3 with no remainder. So I know that means that 2 times 3 equals 6, right? They're, they go hand in hand. 6 being divisible by 2 means that 2 times 3 equals 6. Um, so as a side note, you know, connect it to numbers. Um, but we can tell here that because we got a remainder of 0, that means that this is a zero of the function, and another way of saying that is that the factor, um, so we said k equals 1 is a zero of the function, and the function was x squared minus 5x plus 4. So that means that we can take x squared minus 5x plus 4, and since there's no remainder when you um, divide x squared minus 5x plus 4 by x minus 1, then I can rewrite my um, polynomial using these two values as the coefficients for another binomial. So I'll have 1x minus 4. So, okay, let me, let me just recap that. I might have gone too fast. So k equals 1 is a 0 of f of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 1. What that also means is that if I do x minus k, it'll be a factor. It will divide evenly, in other words, into the function. So what's x minus k? x minus k, since k is 1 here, is x minus 1. And since it's a factor, I know that when I multiply these together, I'll get back the original polynomial, right? Because I, if you can 
if you can do x squared minus 5x plus 4 divided by x minus 1 and get the answer x minus 4, then it follows, it has to be true, then, okay, so if this is true, then when you multiply those quantities together, you get the original back, okay? So I'm just kind of really trying to keep reiterating these connections here. All right, now, is k equals 2 a 0 of f of x? Um, well, we can plug it in, and that's kind of the easiest way, but remember, you're supposed to be learning how to use synthetic division. So look at this. The 4s cancel, and you get negative 6. So no, it's not a 0 of the function. So that means, what does that mean? That means that the binomial x minus 2, x minus k, right, does not divide evenly into this function right here. So if I were to divide that into x squared minus 3x minus 4, then I will get, you know, stuff will happen, I'll have some stuff, you know, in my quotient, but then I will get a remainder that is not 0. That's what it means, okay? So another way that you can tell if x, if k is a 0 of the function is to actually perform the division and see if you get a remainder of 0. If you get a remainder of 0, then your answer would be yes, it is a 0 of the function. But if your remainder is not 0, then your answer would be no, right? So, but what you do is you take your k and the coefficients of your polynomial, which here is 1, negative 3, also they have to be in order by degree, negative 4, okay, so there can't be any skips. It goes from x squared to x to the 1 to x to the 0. Um, if there's any skips, put zeros to placehold them. All right, and then the process, drop down the first one. 1, 2 times 1 is 2, and then I get um, negative 1 from those. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and then adding those together, I get negative 6. See, there's that, there's that, oh, look at that, that remainder is not 0, right? So k is, so 2, k equals 2 is not a 0 of the function, just like we saw here. And so that's another thing that we can, we can do with synthetic division is we can tell um, by doing synthetic division, we can get the answer where we evaluate. When I evaluated the function by plugging in x equals 2, so I evaluated f of 2, right? And look what I got. I got negative 6, which is the remainder when I divide. So they're connected here. It's another way of finding the value when you plug in a certain x value, value of the function. And I actually did not list that on my uses slide. Uh, I wanted to focus on some other, you know, how it actually gives us our factors to graph, but that's another really cool feature of you know, understanding the connection between um, synthetic division and zeros of polynomials or non-zeros of polynomials. Okay, um, let's skip this one. Let's do, oh, here. Um, now, I'm telling you right now, here's your function f of x equals x squared minus 3x minus 4. And I'm telling you that the given k is a zero of the function. So I'm telling you that if you plug in 4 into this polynomial, you're going to get 0. Now you can test me on it, but just to save us the time, I've already figured this out, okay? So 4 is a 0 of this polynomial. Now, what does that mean? What are some other ways to say this? We can say that f of 4 equals 0. We can say that x minus 4 is a factor of the polynomial of the function. 
we can say that the remainder when you divide the polynomial by x minus 4 is 0 and we can say that there is an x-intercept at 4 comma 0 for the graph of f of x and another name for a 0 of a polynomial function is root so I could say that a root of f of x is 4. Also finally f of x equals x minus 4 times another polynomial. All right, so why is that important? Because we're getting to the grand finale here, which is how to answer a question like this. Use synthetic division to factor, um, it's a little cut off here. Let me see if I can fix that. Use synthetic division to factor, okay? Now, I don't know how, or maybe I should say we, you, at this point, probably don't know how to factor this polynomial right here. But they gave us some other information that will make it possible for us to do it. They've told us that when x equals negative 5, the y value is 0. So in other words, what are the things we can say? We can say that negative 5, when x is equal to negative 5, it is a 0 of f of x. What does that mean? That means that the point negative 5 comma 0 is an x-intercept of the function. It also means, and I'm sorry about the lawnmower if you can hear it, I'm going to keep on pushing though I'm almost to the end here, it's a long video. Um, it also means that the quantity x minus negative 5, and so a double negative would give me plus 5, is a factor of f of x, okay? So let me use that. I'm going to use the value of k, the k in here, x equals k, right? So k is negative 5. And I am going to do synthetic division over here. I'm going to do synthetic division. I'm going to take the negative 5 and make sure that my degrees go 3, 2, 1, and then x to the 0 is there. So I can use the coefficients without any extra placeholders. 10, 63, 68, and 15. And I'm just going to do my synthetic division. Drop down the first one. Negative 5 times 10 is negative 50. Add those and get positive 13. Negative 5 times 13 is negative 65. Add those together and get 3. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. And there you go. I have a remainder of 0. Okay? That's my remainder. In other words, there is no remainder. In other words, this divides evenly. Now, what I do is I look at my original polynomial, which was degree 3. The lawnmower is getting closer. <laughs> I'm trying to cover my mic. Um, I look at my my coefficients here. These are the new coefficients for my factor that's going to, well, okay, let me just write it out. It's easier to write it out than to try to say it. Okay, so I'm writing f of x, take my linear factor of x plus 5, and then since that was a degree 3 that I was dividing, my, and I've taken out a power of 1, x to the power of 1. Now, these numbers will be the coefficient of a degree 2 polynomial. Okay, so you can see I just took all of my coefficients here from this step and use them to create a new degree 2 polynomial. So now it's not completely factored 
but I do know how, if I just leave this one out here and focus now on this other polynomial right here, I know how to factor a quadratic po polynomial. So to finish it off, notice that we just did this. We took the original function given here, okay, that's this, and we used the fact that negative 5 was a 0 of the function to set the whole thing equal to um, 0 and figure out the new factored version that we just had on the previous slide, okay, then we can take this part of it here, this factor, and since that is quadratic, I know how to factor that, assuming it's factorable, and this one is. If it wasn't factorable, you could still um, use the quadratic formula to find the other two zeros. And so now, I was able to factor out that part into these two linear factors. And so that's my answer right there in the box, okay, because the directions were use synthetic division to factor this polynomial. So we have now factored it as far as we can. And something we can take from this, how is this useful? Because we can use this, set the whole thing equal to zero, so that we get our three x-intercepts um, as listed here. So you have the x-intercept that comes from this first. That's a zero of the function. So if you set this whole factor equal to zero, then you'll get x equals negative five. So this is the actual zero of the function. This whole thing is the factor, and this is the actual zero because it makes y equal zero when you plug it into the function and then likewise for the other two. So here's my second linear factor, and that gave me this x-intercept. Notice it's the opposite in sign because if you set x plus 1 equal to 0 and solve for x, you'll get x equals negative 1. And the last one where you have this factor, that's going to give you this when you set it equal to 0. So if you want to see it, try it yourself set this equal to zero, you subtract three on both sides, then you divide by 10, right? So you get x equals negative three over 10. So it's not that hard. You know, I know fractions look intimidating at times, but that's it. So that's how we do it. And that's, that's why it's so cool because now I can go, if I'm, let's say the directions here were only to factor right, to use synthetic division to factor, and we did that. If the directions had been to sketch the polynomial function, then I would have a really good starting place because I would know that I could make these three points on the x-axis, and then using end behavior, which is a whole nother video, um, my knowledge about end behavior, I mean, the quick and dirty version of it is if you have an odd degree polynomial, then you know the ends of the polynomial are going to go in different directions, opposite directions. And if the lead coefficient is positive, the up end will be in quadrant one. And if it's negative, the, the down end will be in, um, or I meant to say, the up end will be in quadrant three. Um, so this has a positive lead coefficient with an odd degree polynomial or odd degree. And so that means that it's going to look like one of these, but there's extra stuff going on in between the ends. So the end behavior is like this. So it's really easy for me now to get a really good rough sketch just from knowing that the, the left end is pointed down, the right end is pointed up, and I've got these three intercepts in between, so this thing's going to wiggle through those, those three points. Pretty cool.